Hello guys, welcome back to Axangel RC. Today I'm going to try and explain how to flash and set up our plane on an Omnibus F4 Pro board that usually comes pre-flashed with Betaflight and is more commonly used on racing copters as many of you probably know already. Lucky for us, the people who developed the Pilot code have decided to make us a happy bunch and to rewrite the code for boards like the Omnibus F4 Pro and even though it is still in beta, most of the features are fully working and can be tested by anyone willing to do the extra work necessary to flash this board or some other racing boards with the Arduino code. So let's get on with this and since I have an Omnibus F4 Pro I will be using it to demonstrate the process but it will be similar for other supported boards as well. Since the code is still not officially released you will need to manually download the files from the Arduino Pilot firmware website. The link is in the description below. When you go to the website go to planes or whatever other type of model you would like to use and then enter the latest folder that has a date as the name and then again go into the latest dated folder. In there you will see a list of folders with flight controller board names on them and as you can see there are other familiar boards such as the Matic, F405 Wing, the Mini Pix, etc. And since I need the file for the Omnibus F4 Pro I will go into that folder. In there are a few files but if this is the first time you install the Ardu code on the board you will need to get the file that in my case says Ardu plane with BL as that also includes the Ardu bootloader in it which is necessary to then be able to connect the board to Mission Planner or other similar software. In case you already have flashed the board and just need an update you should download the .apj file which can be directly flashed via Mission Planner but I'll get back to this a bit later. So for a first time install download the firmware type with BL file then connect the board to the computer and the easiest way to flash it is actually via the Betaflight configurator. Open that and go to the firmware flasher tab, scroll down and select load firmware local, find the file just downloaded, open it and then select flash firmware. If all is good the configurator should put the board into DFU mode automatically and should start the flashing process. If the process doesn't start or there is some other issue correct it and try again. Once the flashing is done you are now ready and can connect to the board via Mission Planner for instance or another RG compatible software but I do use Mission Planner so we'll demonstrate the next steps in it. Just like with any other APM or Pixhole flight controller, select the proper COM port. It should by default set the speed to the correct value and hit connect. And if all is good, it should start loading the parameters. Once done, on the left in the head of display, you should be able to see some action when you move the board around and it did seem to work as it should. You see, flashing this is not so complicated and is quite easy. The first thing that I normally do is to use a well-leveled surface to calibrate the board's accelerometer. That can be done by going to initial setup on top, then mandatory hardware on the left and then accelerometer calibration. I normally use the top button as it goes through a six step calibration process which in theory should be more precise than the single axis calibration available via the bottom button. Once you press it just follow the instructions that will show up and rotate the board accordingly. Once this calibration is done next thing I like to do is go to the compass tab and disable compass use because honestly a compass on a plane unless it is a veto plane is not needed and only brings with it more complications and more calibrations. The code is more than capable of calculating a bloody accurate heading direction from the GPS data and that has worked for me for years now so do yourself a favor and disable the compass unless you have a very specific reason to use one and would actually need it. Next feel free to move to the radio calibration tab but make sure you connect the receiver to the board before that. Refer to a pinout diagram for your particular board if you need to. I use the FSKI L9R receiver and connected the SBUS wire directly there without doing any other mods to the board seems to work just fine. Once the receiver is connected and you can see the stick movement reflected on the channel bus, set up channel 8 with a 3 position switch for the flight modes and click the calibrate radio button and follow the instructions. Once done the servo output tab is a convenient place where you can see what the autopilot is actually outputting to the servos and motor just in case you need to troubleshoot something. Also here is the place where you will set up a VTEL for instance and the whole process is quite simple. For more info on that please refer to the Arduino Plane website. I have put a link to it in the description below. Now the ESC calibration tab. I am still not sure how this should be done so I basically calibrate the ESC directly from the radio. I have never been able to get this process to work on planes. Does work on copters though in case you're gonna use that. Next is the flight modes where you can pick and choose which ones will be on that 3 or 6 position switch if you have the latter that you have dead 
dedicated for that purpose. And last is the failsafe screen. And if you're using an FS guide to run this like I am, you shouldn't have to change much here unless you want some battery failsafe conditions or others. But you should remember to properly set the failsafe on your receiver to either lower throttle below 950 or program it to output no pulses on signal loss, which will be correctly interpreted by the autopilot as a failsafe event. And now on to what most people are interested in, the OSD configuration. Sadly, there is no graphical user interface for that yet, so you will have to do it via the full parameter list or tree. I do prefer to use the tree, keeps things a bit more organized. So go to the full parameter tree and scroll down until you locate the OSD type parameter. Set that to one, hit the right parameters button and then restart the flight controller to enable the OSD. Go back to the full parameter tree and scroll down to the OSD parameters and now you will also see four additional OSD parameters. Those are four separate OSD screens that you can have and you can set up a switch on the radio to cycle through them. Decide how many screens you're going to need, set their parameters to one, save the changes and then refresh the parameter list so it would load up the new extended parameter trees for these OSD screens. The OSD parameter drop down without a number after it is the main settings tree where you set up fonts, screen switching channel etc. A link to the parameters and what each does is included in the description below so read up on it before messing around. In my case after the parameter refresh I now have OSD1 and when I expand that you can see all of the OSD items that would show on the screen. Things are pretty self-explanatory from here on. The params that end with a lower dash end determine whether a given item is enabled or disabled and hence if it will show on the screen or not. The other two parameters below determine its position on the screen starting from left to right. At this point you should also connect an FPV system to the flight controller board, turn that on and power on your goggles or monitor so you can actually see the actual OSD overlay on the screen and then you can start playing with the OSD parameters and moving stuff around. Have a thorough read through the audio pilot webpage link for the OSD that I have linked below. It does explain a lot of things and would make setting this up much easier. You do have to save the changes you have made before you will see the OSD items moved on the screen. Keep in mind that not all items which are currently available with a minimum OSD for instance have been added yet but updated firmware versions are added almost daily so I think soon all items will be available. At least with the firmware my version I uploaded I have most of the stuff and the most important ones so I'm happy for the time being. All of this is quite easy when you get the hang of it and I do hope at some point we will also get a graphical user interface for the OSD setup just like in Betaflight or like the Minim OSD configurator. One last thing now since you already have the board properly flashed with the bootloader and all at some point you might want to update that firmware. To do that disconnect the board from Mission Planner by hitting the button in the top right corner of the screen then go to initial setup and hit the install firmware tab. In there you will see all possible types of RC models that are supported by the code and once the firmware becomes official updating it would be as easy as clicking on the icon that is relevant to you and just following the instructions. For now though since this is still in development to update to the most recent developer version of the code you have to go to the Audio Pilot firmware website as before go to your model of choice enter the most recent dated folder then again and then find the folder with your board's name on it. Enter the that one and download the .apj file. After that go back to Mission Planner, make sure the board is connected to the computer but not connected to Mission Planner, then go on the install firmware tab, click on the load custom firmware option and browse to the file you just downloaded. Open it and follow the instructions. I know it is not as easy as just clicking an icon but it is still simpler than it could have been and I think most people should find it quite easy to do. After all of this the board is pretty much ready to be installed in your model of choice and following you can finalize setting up the output channels, movement direction of control surfaces and so on but those are things which I will not be covering here purely because they've been covered to death in other people's videos and on forums so just go looking around if you need any additional information. Plus I really don't want to make this video an hour long. Now all of the relevant links for the stuff I've talked about can be found in the description below so don't be shy, go and check them out especially if you are new to Audio Pilot. Also while you're at the Audio Pilot page have a look around 
around and read anything that seems relevant to what you want to do. They have a lot of information there and it all adds up little by little to clear up the initial fog that is the audio pilot code. If you would like to support my work, Patreon is one way to do it. Alternatively, in the video description you will also find some links to certain websites and using them to purchase any product off of these websites will end up with me getting a small commission at no additional cost to you, which in turn will go a long way towards supporting what I do and you will have my eternal gratitude. If you have found this video useful, please feel free to like, share and subscribe if you haven't already and also consider following me on Facebook for more regular updates. I wish you successful flashing and until next time.